In an enchanted world, the evil queen curses the whole kingdom. Meanwhile, in the real world, a woman discovers the doomed town of Storybrook, where she finds herself a fairy tale heroine who must save the people from eternal damnation. One day, Prince Charming races into the woods for Snow White, who ate a poisoned apple that had her in a death-like sleep. He finds the seven dwarves mourning over their friend's glass coffin as the rain starts to pour. Devastated, the prince insists on opening the casket to bid his farewell. He kisses the sleeping lady, and a wave of energy emanates from their union. Snow awakens from true love's kiss as Prince Charming beams at her. Soon after, the lovers exchange wedding vows before the kingdom. As they are about to kiss, the evil queen barges inside the hall and swats the charging guards. Snow pulls the prince's sword and declares that the witch is no longer queen. Prince Charming grabs the weapon from his bride and threatens the mischievous intruder. Undaunted, the queen delivers her gift to the newlyweds. She vows to destroy everyone's happiness and steal everything they love. Before she exits, the prince throws his sword at her, but the witch dissipates into smoke, leaving the kingdom in terror. In the real world, a boy, Henry Mills, reads Snow White's tale in a storybook as he rides a bus to Boston. Arriving, he hails a cab and pays via credit card. In a restaurant, Emma Swan meets her blind date, Ryan. After exchanging pleasantries, the friendless woman shares that today is her birthday. Then she reveals that she knows he embezzled money and abandoned his family. Realizing his date is a bondsman or a professional who loans bail money, Ryan flips the table and dashes outside. Ryan enters his car, but Emma had it clamped so he can't escape. The bondsman tells him to give his money to his family, so he mocks her since she doesn't have one and Emma knocks him out. Afterward, Emma goes home and lights a cupcake to celebrate her birthday. Suddenly, the doorbell rings, and Emma sees Henry at her doorstep. The boy introduces himself as her son and enters the woman's apartment uninvited. Confused, Emma denies Henry's accusations. Henry reminds her that he's the baby she surrendered for adoption 10 years ago. Haunted by her past, Emma composes herself. Then, the boy asks her to come to Storybrook with him. The woman refuses, but reluctantly surrenders in pity. In the enchanted world, a pregnant Snow White ponders on the Queen's threats. Prince Charming assures her safety, but his wife reminds him that the witch once poisoned her. To ease her mind, Snow pleads to meet with the imprisoned seer. The prince refuses, but when his wife asks if he can guarantee their protection, he hesitantly agrees. On the road to Storybrook, Emma probes about Henry's book, which she claims is happening in reality. Emma disagrees and says that what he believes in isn't necessarily true. Then, Henry reveals that his birth mother is in the book. Unconvinced, Emma thinks that the boy has problems, which he replies that she must fix. In a prison, a jailer warns Snow White and Prince Charming that they must not let Rumpelstiltskin know their name. However, the dwarf already knows who they are and what they want, rendering their cloaks futile. Snow demands answers about the threat, but Rumpelstiltskin wants her unborn child's name in exchange. The prince refuses, but the desperate woman seals the deal. Rumpelstiltskin reveals that the queen created a powerful curse that will stop time and imprison them all in a place where everything they love will be taken. Distressed, Snow asks for a solution, so the madman says that her child will be their only hope. They must assure its safety because on the unborn's 28th birthday, it will return to them, and the final battle will reign. Prince Charming leads his wife away when Rumpelstiltskin demands their daughter's name, implying that he already knows it's a girl. Snow White stops and reveals they'll name her Emma. Meanwhile, Emma and Henry finally reach Storybrook. The bondsman drives through town, but the boy refuses to give an address. Annoyed, Emma stops abruptly and exits the car, noticing the town's frozen clock, which Henry claims to be the evil queen's doing. The curse trapped everyone from the enchanted world in Storybrook, where time stopped. If they try to leave, unspeakable events will happen. However, Emma refuses to believe his fairy tales. Then, a therapist, Archie Hopper, greets them when Emma learns that Henry is the mayor's son. Archie reprimands Henry for lying about his absence, saying he mustn't give in to his dark side. As the man leaves, Emma comments that Archie seems normal, unlike Henry's claims. The boy reveals that the story characters are unaware of their true identities and fate in the town. Still unconvinced, Emma drives to Henry's house, who reveals that Archie is Jiminy Cricket. In the palace, Prince Charming proposes to fight the queen to his council. Jiminy Cricket disagrees and advises him not to surrender to his dark side, just like Archie told Henry. However, the prince insists they must strike before the witch starts the curse. Doc, a dwarf, doubts Rumpelstiltskin, but the animal's frenzy in the forest affirms the queen's plan. Hopeless, Snow believes that the future is set but her husband is persistent. He assures his worried wife that their daughter will save them. Suddenly, the blue fairy enters with troops carrying a mystical tree that wards off any curse. 
The fairy asks the craftsman, Geppetto, to carve the wood into a vessel with his son, Pinocchio's help. Regaining faith on saving Emma, the blue fairy reveals that the magic can only secure one person, leaving the couple in a dilemma. Meanwhile, Emma brings Henry home to the mayor's house. The boy protests, calling his adoptive mother evil. Then, Regina Mills, the mayor, runs out of the house and embraces Henry. The boy says he's found his real mother and runs to his room. Sheriff Graham, with Regina, volunteers to check on Henry and give the women some privacy. Regina invites Emma inside, revealing that she doesn't know how Henry found her. Emma assures her that she has nothing to worry about since the father doesn't know about Henry. Unaware of Regina's true identity, Emma places her glass beside a tray of apples the queen used against Snow White. Then, Regina explains that she's strict for Henry's sake, so Emma mentions Henry's fascination with his storybook which affected his decisions. However, Regina claims she doesn't know about it, and Emma gets up to leave. Outside, Emma sees Henry looking at her from his window as she drives home. On the road, Emma finds the storybook in the car. Suddenly, a wolf appears ahead, so she swerves off the road and hits the town marker, knocking her unconscious. At the castle, Geppetto and Pinocchio are carving the mystical tree into a magical wardrobe. Meanwhile, Snow White contemplates leaving her husband since they decided to save her and the unborn. Hopeful, Prince Charming assures that they will reunite after 28 years. Then, Snow suddenly feels that the baby is coming. At the watchtower, Grumpy notices a dark cloud approaching from the forest. Recognizing the curse, the dwarf rings the bell in alarm. At the sheriff's station, Emma awakens in a cell with the grumpy handyman, Leroy, locked beside her. Marco, a carpenter, greets Henry's birth mother and shares that he's not blessed with a child. Then, Sheriff Graham frees Leroy while he doubts Emma was avoiding a wolf and not drunk driving. Regina enters the station, reporting that Henry's missing again, and sees the boy's birth mother locked up. An expert in finding people, Emma volunteers to help while they free her in return. In Henry's room, the bondsman goes through Henry's computer. She learns that he has cleared his inbox, but Emma uses a recovery disc to retrieve them. Emma stumbles upon a website Henry used to find her, where he used the credit card belonging to Mary Margaret Blanchard, who Regina recognizes as her son's teacher. In class, Margaret frees a bird in front of her students when the bell rings. As students scramble outside, Regina confronts the teacher with Emma. Oblivious, Margaret admits she knows nothing about Henry's disappearance and learns that the boy stole her card. The mayor grills the teacher about the book she gave him, while Margaret claims that Henry is special. Regina storms off, knocking books on her way. Appalled by the mayor's impatience, Emma apologizes and helps her pick them up. The bondsman asks her about the storybook, so Margaret says that Henry needs it to have hope since he's having trouble as an orphan. Emma realizes that the teacher knows where the boy is, so Margaret suggests checking the abandoned playground, Henry's castle. Meanwhile, Snow White screams in her chamber while she tries to keep herself from giving birth. As the magical wardrobe finishes, Doc insists they must deliver the child. In the distance, the evil queen leads her brigade of black knights into the castle as the storm cloud closes in. Finally, Emma is born, so Snow insists the baby must continue to the wardrobe without them. Tarn, the couple bid farewell and Prince Charming charges outside with his sword. Hopeful Emma will return, he puts her inside the wardrobe and fights the charging knights. Unfortunately, the prince gets stabbed, but the knights find the vessel empty, implying that Emma has escaped. In the playground, Emma returns Henry's book. Henry thought things would change after her arrival since it's her destiny to bring back happy endings. Then, the boy claims he understands why she left him, saying that Snow White has the same reason for giving Emma away, implying that the princess is her mother. However, the bondsman insists she's a real person and no savior. Desperate, Henry asks her to stay, claiming he doesn't like his life. Emotionally, Emma reveals she's an orphan who hates her parents for abandoning her carelessly. Henry defends it is to save her from the curse, but Emma remains unconvinced. Meanwhile, Snow finds her lifeless husband on the ground. The evil queen enters and learns that the child has escaped, so she casts the curse. Black clouds engulf them, throwing them into a world where happy endings will only be the queens. At the mayor's house, Emma returns Henry and shares that the boy's sudden appearance in her life fulfilled their birthday wish. Irritated, Regina reminds her she doesn't have a right to Henry and threatens her if she returns. Appalled by the mayor's insolence, Emma asks Regina if she loves Henry, which she affirms and shuts the door. Inside, Regina confiscates Henry's storybook and examines her reflection in the mirror in worry. At the hospital where Margaret volunteers, she visits a patient and leaves him in slumber. Meanwhile, Emma enters an inn, where she finds Granny arguing with her granddaughter, Ruby. Surprised, Granny eagerly gives her a room and registers her name. Suddenly, a merchant who owns the town named Mr. Gold comes to collect Granny's dues and comments on Emma's name. 
Once he leaves, Emma affirms that she'll stay for a week, just like Henry wanted. The boy watches the town's clock move its hand for the first time, signifying that his birth mother's return starts to weaken the witch's curse. The next day, Regina finds the storybook has missing pages and confronts Henry about it. Nonchalant, the boy claims it's long gone and dismisses his adoptive mother's concerns as he prepares for school. Suddenly, the town's bell chimes, telling everyone that the clock has unfrozen, which alarms Regina. In town, the mayor sees Emma's car parked in front of the inn. Regina greets the bondsman in her room with a basket of apples she grew herself. The mayor learns that Emma plans to stay, so she blatantly asks her to leave for Henry's sake, mentioning that the boy's in therapy. However, Emma recognizes her threats, so she insists on staying. Back when Prince Charming threw his sword at the evil queen, she teleported to her castle, where she talked with the magic mirror. The queen revealed that she'd cast the dark curse, which surprised the mirror and her servant. In the Forbidden Fortress, the queen meets Maleficent, whose Sleeping Beauty defeated. She came to retrieve her dark curse, which she traded with Maleficent's Sleeping Curse. Maleficent refused, but the queen wanted Snow White's suffering and insisted. The two sparred and as the queen trapped her friend, she grabbed Maleficent's staff and broke its orb, containing the curse. Maleficent tried to stop her since a great power comes with a price, but the queen ignored and left. Afterward, the queen gathered other dark forces into the woods, where she guaranteed their victory. She collected locks of their hair and threatened them with the bewitched trees. Finally, she threw the final ingredient into the fire, her prized deed's heart. When the black cloud grew and diminished quickly, the evil gnome laughed, so the queen petrified him in anger. Concurrently, the gnome statue is displayed in Regina's garden, where she harvests apples from her tree. Then, editor Sidney greets Regina with the town's newspaper, Storybrooke's Daily Mirror, featuring Emma's latest offense. He admits to knowing little about the bondsman as the mayor requested. Regina finds his intel useless and threatens to dispose of him. At Granny's diner, Ruby serves Emma hot chocolate while she reads the newspaper. Someone ordered it for her and sees Sheriff Graham sitting nearby. Emma returns the drink to Graham, rejecting his supposed advances toward her. Then, Henry interjects from another booth, claiming he sent the cocoa, not the sheriff. Afterward, Emma walks the boy to school while she inquires about the mayor and his storybook. Henry sees her with Regina's apple, so he immediately throws it away. Entertaining the boy's fascination, Emma learns that the townspeople have unclear memories, unaging, and stuck in town. Henry insists that she's their savior and shows her the missing pages in the book with her name. The boy urges her to read and hide it from Regina while Emma reluctantly accepts. Enthusiastic, Henry enters school while Margaret reads Emma. The teacher admits that the storybook has affected the boy's imagination, who believes Regina is the evil queen. Margaret reveals Henry thinks she's Snow White, which catches Emma by surprise. Afterward, Emma meets Dr. Archie, Henry's therapist, who assumes she came for a diagnosis. The bondsman asks about the boy's fairy tale obsession and calls it crazy. However, Archie claims it's Henry's expression, and hands her the boy's files despite patient doctor confidentiality. He tells Emma she's important to Henry and warns her not to destroy his imagination. As Emma leaves, Archie calls the mayor, confirming that the bondsman came and left with Henry's files. While reading Henry's records, Sheriff Graham knocks on Emma's room. He claims that Dr. Archie reported she stole the boy's files, so he arrests the accommodating bondsman who says she's been framed. At school, Regina rudely interrupts Margaret's class. She tells Henry that Emma has been arrested for robbery, saying she's not good for him. However, Henry doesn't believe her and nonchalantly returns to class. While taking mugshots, Emma tells the sheriff about Regina, but Graham defends the mayor. Then, Henry enters with Margaret, saying the teacher is bailing her out. Afterward, a noise alarms Regina and sees Emma saw off her tree's branch. The mayor confronts the intruder and Emma threatens her in return. Back when the evil queen failed casting the dark curse, her servant advised consulting its first bearer. In prison, the queen secretly visited Rumpelstiltskin, who revealed that Snow's child could break the curse. The madman asked her to make him rich and heeds his request in the new realm. Desperate to know how the curse works, the queen agreed. So, Rumpelstiltskin told her to sacrifice her beloved's heart as she relentlessly sought vengeance. Meanwhile, Granny asks Emma to leave the inn after the mayor reminds her no felons are allowed to town property. In her garden, Regina collects her apples from the ground while Graham doubts Emma's charges. Furious, the mayor believes it's best for Henry, but the sheriff disagrees. Afterward, Emma finds her car clamped when she's invited to Regina's house. At the mayor's house, Emma reiterates that she doesn't intend to take Henry away. She explains her concern about his obsession with fairy tales and calls it crazy. However, Henry hears everything and runs away, so Emma learns that Regina planned it all along. 
Back when the evil queen learned about the curse, she revealed that she must kill the servant, her beloved father, to enact the curse. He tried stopping her, but power blinded the witch, so she took his heart in tears. Meanwhile, Emma visits Margaret's home, who welcomes her warmly. The bondsman reveals she's leaving town, but the teacher persuades her to stay for Henry's protection. In Dr. Archie's session, Henry tells him that he doesn't believe he's a character anymore. Suddenly, Emma barges in as Archie apologizes. She explains that they must make the evil queen know they're non-believers. Gaining the boy's trust, Emma throws the pages into the fireplace as Henry embraces her. In the enchanted forest, the queen sacrificed her father's heart into the flames that enacted the curse. Then she offered a rose to her beloved father, Henry, which she named her adoptive son in the real world. That night, Mr. Gold visits Regina, who tends to her tree. However, she learns that Emma stays in Storybrooke, so the merchant offers to help. Regina refuses, but Mr. Gold probes Henry's name. Alarmed, the mayor changes the topic and questions the mischievous merchant about where he got Henry and Emma's identity. Mr. Gold refuses to answer, leaving Regina, the evil queen, in distraught. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.